All right, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to In the Backyard, Pastor Perryman. Hey, today is a beautiful day. It's an exciting day. It's a lovely day. But man, today is a Wednesday. It's a Thursday. So listen, y'all do me a favor. Y'all share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite. Start a watch party, get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Shout out to Miss Michelle McClung, who's on today. Miss Abigail Yates is rocking with us this morning. Miss Sheila T. Roby is with us this morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being on today. Brian Perryman, good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Y'all do me a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, today is going to be an exciting day. It's going to be a lovely day. And the reason being is because you're alive today. So y'all share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part this morning. Shout out to Miss Jennifer Smith. I got to give you my pound. Shout out to Miss Victoria Williams. I got to give you my hug today. So good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So again, y'all share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Today is a beautiful day. It's an exciting day. But most of all, man, it's a lovely day. It really is. This is the day the Lord have made. And the psalmist said, we will rejoice and be glad in it. So listen, let's get ready to get to it today. Miss Kelly Johnson is on this morning. Miss Bam is rocking with us today. Hey, I had to make my own coffee this morning. But nevertheless, it's going to still be a great day today. So y'all share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party. I think my wife must be really tired. She didn't wake up this morning. <laughs> So y'all, share, like, tag, invite today, all right? Miss Ruth Landaverde is on this morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So let me get some of this amazing cover that I made, and we're going to have at it today. Oh, man, I got this Bluetooth in my ear. Let me get this thing out of my ear. I didn't know I had it in here. Hey, shout out to Miss uh, uh, Shirley Powell, who's on today. See, if my wife was on today, she'd have told me I had this Bluetooth in my ear. But anyway, let's get ready to get to it this morning. We're going to have a great time in the law. But y'all, share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Please do that. Oh, and by the way, I'm rocking my Belizean cup this morning, too. So, again, share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. All right, let's get to it today. You know, everybody knows my story. Well, the majority of you should know my story, how I was married before Pastor Sophia and how I went through separation that led to a divorce that was really tough on me and painful on me. And I'm talking about, you've heard me talk about how the silence was king in my house, that I did not realize that silence could be that loud. So here I am, I'm in my home. I'm frustrated, I'm irritated, I'm agitated. I don't hear the sound of kids. I don't hear no noise, period. The, 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 the sun is shining, but it seems gloomy to me. And so here I am, I'm, I've lost everything. I gotta go back and move back home with my mother. So here I am living in the home with my mother. I'm a grown man, I got a job and I don't have enough money to make it at all. And I'm just down and out. I've lost my confidence, I've lost my swag, I've lost everything about me. And I don't know how I'm gonna make it. And not only, on, not only that, but on top of that, here I am, I'm a vibrant young man and I ain't got nobody in my life. So now here I am, I'm frustrated, irritated, agitated, lost my confidence, but at the same time now, I'm lonely, I'm looking for somebody in my life. I don't have control over this flesh. I'm taking cold showers every two, every, like two, three times a day, trying to get this flesh under control. I'm going to church, but I don't seem to have this thing together. And so I'm tore up and I'm jacked up and I'm messed up. And loneliness is plaguing on me. And I'm wondering, will I ever have a relationship again? I'm wondering, will I ever be involved with somebody else again in life? All of these things are going through in my head. And one day I made a decision that I was going to come out of my situation, that I was going to get my swag back, I was going to get my confidence back that I wasn't going to let frustration reside in me, but I was going to get me back. I may not have anybody in my life at this moment, but what I am going to do is I'm going to date myself. Here's what I did. I made a reservation downtown Long Beach at one of the restaurants there before they got the pike. I made a reservation down there, and I told the, the lady when she answered the phone, I told her I wanted to make a reservation. She said, for how many, for how many people? I said, table for one, please. 
she says, table for one. Okay. When I get to the to the place at the allotted time that I sat, I walk in the doors. I'm dressed to the nine. I got my suit and tie on. I'm going out on a date. I'm taking me out on a date. The maitre d' takes me and he seats me at my seat. This place is crowded and I'm sitting at the table with a table for one. And some of you might be saying, Pastor, that's, that would be uncomfortable for me, for me to take me out. That would be uncomfortable for me because I don't know about dating me. I don't know about taking me out. I don't know about that. May I tell you today that sometimes that you have to take you out on a date just so you can rediscover who you are. That sometimes you have to take you out on a date so you can get to know you all over again. Sometimes you have to take you out on a date so that you can get your confidence back so you can prove something to yourself that I don't need somebody in my life just to have a good time. And there are many people today who are experiencing loneliness. Loneliness doesn't necessarily mean that you're single and lonely. But there are people who are watching me today who can be, a, be in a, a crowded room full of people and still feel lonely. There are people who are watching me today who are married and still feel lonely. There are people who are in communication with people every day, all day, and you are still lonely. See, when you are lonely, you do things in order to combat your loneliness. Some people, they go do a lot of shopping. That's to combat their loneliness. Some people want to go hang out with everybody because that's to combat their loneliness. Other people run to God and that's to combat their loneliness. And you might be saying, Pastor, wait a minute, they run to God to combat their loneliness? Yeah, they, they run to God to combat their loneliness now because here I am, I'm, I'm lonely, I don't have anybody in my life, so let me run to God and you become super religious. You become super hype. You become over the top religious because you are in a lonely state. You are in a situation where you are frustrated. And so you figure the only way out of this is let me run to God. Let me run to God. And so you become, you become super sensitive as a Christian. You become over the top as a Christian. You become super religious as a Christian because the reality is you are trying to combat your loneliness and then with your mindset, you be up and down, up and down, up and down. What does that mean, Pastor? Up and down. See, when you're running to God because you are lonely, you're trying to combat this loneliness. You're not coming to him for the right reasons. I'm talking to somebody. You're not coming to him for the right reasons. So watch this now. You're running for God, and, and then all of a sudden, in two to three days, you, you, you fall back into this state of, you fall back into this funk. You fall back into this, this displeasing state. And so now you're further. It's not where it was before. That's because you were running to God for the wrong reasons. You were running to him to get a temporary fix. God put a Band-Aid on this thing. You understand? It's like when your teeth hurt, you get Novocaine or you get some type of uh, 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 medication, dental medication to put on your teeth because what you're trying to do is numb your situation. And may I tell you today that God doesn't want to numb your situation? But what God wants to do is to meet you in your situation. I'm talking to somebody today because you are looking to put Novocaine on your situation. You are looking to get a temporary fix. But God doesn't want to give you a temporary fix. What God wants to do is to meet you in your situation. To meet you in your situation is to help you to rediscover who you are. It's to help you to understand who you are. And for many of you today, you are lonely. But you're not realizing that you don't have to be lonely as long as you got God. So here I am. I got to date me. I don't have Pastor Sophie in my life at this moment. I'm going through this divorce and, and, and I'm struggling. I'm struggling physically. See, pastors don't like to be honest with you. I'm struggling physically. I don't have this physical body together. You understand? I was married before. I thought I had this body under control. And the reality is... I ain't have this physical body under control. So, so here I am. I got thoughts running through my head. Any woman that I see, I got my eye on her. Perhaps she might be the one. I'm a, I'm a Christian man. I'm, 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 I got my license as a minister. I'm not a pastor yet, but could she be the one? Could she be the one? Maybe she the one. And so my eyes are all over the place. It's all over the place. And so here I am now. My eyes are on that which is not God. 
Because if you're not careful, when you allow yourself to enter into a lonely place, here's what the devil does. He takes your concentration away from you by distracting you, putting this in your way, putting that in your way, putting that in your way. And so here you are, you're trying to combat the loneliness. Maybe he the one to combat it for me. Maybe she the one. Maybe this is the one. Maybe I can deal with it this way. Maybe starting a business will combat my loneliness. Maybe going hanging out with my friends every day, all day will combat my loneliness. And you're not realizing that you're pushing yourself deeper and deeper into a place of depression because you have not sat down and had dinner with you. So here I am. I'm sitting down and I'm having dinner with myself. I never forget my meal. My meal was chicken alfredo with the shrimp in it, Cajun spice on it. I got my vegetables. I like to have a little color in my food when I, when I have food. I got, my, I got my, my broccoli, I got my sweet corn, I got, you understand, my sweet carrots all mixed up together, my cauliflower all mixed up together. You understand, and I got my baked potato with the butter in it and the sour cream and the chives. You understand, looking good and bust, everything busting out of it and you can see the steam coming off of it. You understand, I got, I got a glass of lemon water and I'm right there I'm enjoying myself because I hadn't dated me before so there are many of you right now for some of you you've been married the majority of your life but you've never dated you all you know is to be married to somebody else all you know is to take care of kids but you've never dated you you've never taken you out on a date anytime you've ever gone somewhere it has always been with somebody else you've never taken the opportunity to just go somewhere and get to know you because in your mind that shouldn't be i shouldn't have to date me i'm single but i'm lonely may i tell you today that singleness doesn't mean that you have to be lonely for some of you you need to get this revelation that singleness is not a curse but for some of you it's a gift Okay, Pastor, it's a gift? Yeah, it's a gift. The gift is to get to know God. It's a gift to you. I'm talking to somebody. It's a gift for you to get to know God. And usually when you are single and you drop the ball and you're dropping the ball on a consistent basis, it is because you have not developed a relationship that you are supposed to have with God. And because you haven't developed a relationship with God, you are, turn, you're, you, you are turned about with every wind of doctrine. What's a wind of doctrine for you? It, it's this dude walking by. Mm. He got potential. I, I could do something with that. It's that dude walking by. They holler at you, and the first thing's out of your mouth is, you go to church? Of course he's going to say he go to church. He, he, got to, he, he, got to, he got to be able to hook you. So he's going to tell you I go to church? He's going to give you a scripture that's backwards, but he's going to give you one. And so here you are, well, it's potential. And it's because you are in this state where you are single and lonely, but you are not focusing on God. And because you're not focusing on God, you don't even understand that your singleness is not a curse. Your singleness is a gift from God. I'm talking to somebody today. You need to get this revelation. You need to get this understanding. What is the gift from God, Pastor? Paul says it like this. He says, I would, I wish that you was just like me, that you was just single. Just like me. Why, why is he saying so you could be single just like me? So watch this. He says so that the single man or the single woman desires to please God. They, they, they focus on everything about pleasing God. And so he says singleness is your opportunity to get to know God all over again. Singleness is your opportunity to understand God. Singleness is your opportunity to get to know you. So when you sit down at this table of one, you are rediscovering you. You are getting a new understanding and a new revelation of you. You are letting God deposit on the inside of you who you really are. And you are letting him take the taste of, single, I mean, of loneliness out of your life. And there are people who are watching me today. You are married and you are lonely. You don't get the attention that you once got from your husband or, or from your wife. You don't get the love that you used to get. And so here you are, you're in this state and you become lonely. And every day, every day life for you is a routine. I get up, go to work, come home, cook, clean, do this, do this. It's a routine for you. And you're tired of the routine. But the reality is you're getting comfortable in the routine. And you're not realizing that that's not where God wants you at. That God wants to break the routine because he wants to show you a new life. He wants to show you something new that you haven't experienced yet. He wants to show you that there's a new side of him, a new place in him that you have not gone to yet. But, but I'm, still, I'm still doing this, Pastor. I'm still doing this. This is my routine. And before you know it, 
You done went from 25 to being 70 years old in a matter of minutes. It seems like a matter of minutes you've gone to this. And you sit back and you wonder, where has life gone for me? You look at your kids and they're not the little kids anymore running through the house. They done got grown on you. Now all of a sudden you look around and you got some grandkids. And before you know it, they done got grown on you. You understand? You, I was changing your diaper. Now, now you're 16. I, 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 was, I was, you know, running around the house with you. Now, now, now you drive it. See, everything changing It's because you've been caught up in the monotonous of life, the, 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 the rat race of life. You've just been running around and running around and running around, and you have forgotten now to take time out for yourself. And for some of you, because you have emanated loneliness out of your life, emanated loneliness from your life, here's what you've done. You've constantly given the devil opportunities to attack you. What does that mean, Pastor? I'm giving him opportunity to attack. Because your every word is a husband, a wife. When I get my husband, when I get my wife, that's your every thought as a single man and as a single woman. And what you're doing is giving the devil the opportunity to bring things into your life that would derail your life. You're giving him open doors and open opportunities. You're giving him an open invitation to send things into your life that is not good for your life. You're giving him the opportunity to send G-Rock into your life. G-Rock ain't no good for you. But for the men who's constantly looking for a wife, I got to have me a relationship. I'm single. I'm tired of being single. You open up the door for She-Rock. She-Rock shows up in your life too. So there is some female version of G-Rock. Her name is She-Rock. And She-Rock shows up in your life too. And guess what She-Rock does? She-Rock takes advantage of you. She-Rock mistreats you. She-Rock takes your manhood from you. She-Rock takes your confidence away from you. So here you are stuck like a truck in the mud and you're repeating the cycle all over again when you did not even understand that singleness is not a curse. It's really a gift from God. The gift from God is for you to get to know him all over again. I'm talking to somebody today. God has been calling you to a table so that you can sit there and let him teach you about who you are today. Let him take away the fire that's burning out of control in your life so that you can live the life that he wants you to live. See, it's important for you to understand this. So the Bible says, Paul says it like this, that I would that you were single like me. He said the single person cares for the things of God. So watch now. If you're a single individual and you're watching me today and you are not caring for the things of God, then I guarantee you, you are caring for the things of the world. And if you are caring for the things of the world, the world is controlling you. In a sense, you are like a puppet on a string. The devil is controlling every string that you have. He's controlling you. If not, if you're not the puppet on the string, then it's like he, you got a hook in your nose and the devil is carrying you about by pulling the hook in whichever direction. He pulls the hook. That's the direction that you move in because here you are. You are not focusing on the things of God. So being single is not a curse. It's really a gift from God. But watch this now. Paul says, but to the married people, here's what they do. They care for the things of pleasing their husband, pleasing their wives. They're not too much focused every day, all day, on the things of God like you should be as a single person. See, here, here's how we mix things up. Mary, say sanctified. I got to pray all night. And, and, and you're just praying all night long, and you're not even realizing that you cause some confusion in your home because you become too super religious. Okay, what does that mean, Pastor? I'm too super religious. You just praying every day, all day, all night long. Every time I turn around, you got a thousand scriptures to say. You got a prophecy for this. You got this for that. You got this for that. You got this for that. And here you are. You're, you're moaning and screaming all night praying. And the reality is, your husband getting tired of it. I'm talking to somebody right there. Really kind of getting tired of it. You understand? Because you put them in a situation now where you are saying to them that they are not that important. So you're putting them in a position where they're in competition with God. May I tell you today that that's not the place that you want to put your husband. That's not the place that you want to put your wife. God is always number one in your life. But do not neglect your responsibilities. you praying all night long. Oh, God. Well, listen to this. He's tired of hearing your old oh God, and he wants to hear your old oh God. I'm talking to somebody right there. He wants to hear. He don't want to hear all of this all day, but he wants to hear this from you. Can you put this down for a moment? Can you stop doing this for a moment? Can you understand that there is a husband in the house with you? Can you understand that there is a wife in the house with you?
you. Can you understand this? If you cannot understand this, you are never going to have the best relationship that you're supposed to have. Don't put God in a place where he's in competition with your spouse because you don't know how to manage the two. You don't know how to manage the two. There's a balancing act that you got to have. There's a juggling act that you got to have. You got to learn how to balance. You got to learn how to juggle. You got to learn how to do that. But you can't take the spouse and put them on the back burner because I got to be at church 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I, you know, you know, I got to pray all day, every day. And listen to this. The Bible makes a point that says you got to remember that you got a spouse. You can't even fast without your, your spouse's permission. I'm talking to somebody right there. You, you can't even fast without your spouse's permission. That you got, if you want to go on a fast, you got to go to the spouse and say, listen, I, I feel the need to go on a three or four day fast. I, I got to get me together. I really need baby to hear from God. And if the spouse says no, you, you, you can't go on a three or four day fast. I don't care how super religious you are. Well, by a pastor at church, if you got a husband, you cannot just override his will because you are being super religious. And that's the reason that many people are in relationships and still lonely because you don't put things in its proper place. You don't put things where it's supposed to go. The dishes don't go in the trash can. The, the trash doesn't go in the cabinets. It has its proper place. And you have to put everything in its proper place. And if you don't put it in its proper place, it will turn out to create confusion and chaos in the house. Let me give you an example. We... My wife have this, 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 this area set up where she put pans in one area, plates in another area, forks and spoons in this place. She got everything designed way where she wanted to go. And, 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 I'm, and she got cookie sheet, cooking sheet. You understand? You put the cookies on whatever. And she got, you know, sheet that you put chicken in if you want to cover it up a little for. They got a place for it. So here I am. I'm getting ready to bake some chicken. I'm going to put it in the oven and everything. And I'm, I'm pulling out these drawers. This is where this stuff's supposed to be and I can't find it. Now I'm struggling because I can't find it. I know it's supposed to be right here. So I'm going through all these drawers. And it takes me like two or three minutes to pull out all these doggone drawers in the house until I find where it is and then come to find out because one of my kids is washing dishes and too lazy to put things in the place that my wife had to design for. Now all of a sudden we got to go look for everything. See, that's what happens when you don't put everything in its proper place. When you don't put it in its proper place, then somebody now has to go looking for what they shouldn't have to look for. It should already be in the place. And so when we're in a place where we don't develop this relationship with God, where we don't sit down and communicate with God, where we don't get to know ourselves all over again, when we don't understand that singleness is not loneliness, when we don't understand that singleness is not a curse, but it's a gift from God, when we don't understand that, our entire lives are off track. So here I am. I'm at that restaurant and I'm enjoying myself. I'm looking at the people as they go by and the people are looking at me and they're looking at me strange because I'm at the table by myself. And I told the maitre d' I want to sit in the middle. I want to sit in the middle. So here I am, a table for one, sitting in the middle. The waitress is coming by. She said, are you okay, sir? Are you expecting anybody? No, nope. this is a table for one. And this was a shocker to them that I'm sitting at the table with myself. When it was all over with, when I finished eating my dinner, guess what I did? I took myself to the movies. You understand, on Pine Avenue, during that time, the movie theaters and the restaurants were right next to each other, everything to move down to the pike. Now, but as soon as I walked out of there, I already had the movie when it's going to show up, and I walked down just a block, took myself to the movies. Watched the movie, had a good time in the movie. When the movie was over with, took myself across the street and had me a cup of Starbucks coffee. I'm by myself. I'm enjoying myself because that's some of the stuff that I would have done for the, with the individual who's with me. So why not date me? I'm dating me. See, if you don't date you, if you don't get to know you, if you don't learn you all over again, you are never going to be any good for anybody who God brings into your life. And for some of you, the person is on hold because God says it's your season to get to know me. And it's your season to get to know yourself. You have to ask yourself a question. Are you getting to know you? Are you getting to know God in this season of your life? Or are you just a person who's wandering around and, and whining and complaining about what you don't have and you have forgotten who you do have? See, you may not have a companion at this moment. You may be going through some difficulties in the home right now where it's just routine in the house. But may I tell you today, as long as you got Jesus, you got more than enough. As long as you got Christ, you got more than enough. Let me say that to you one more time. As long as you got Christ, you got more than enough. 
I dare you to date you in this season. And I'm not talking about, uh, see, see, sometimes we date ourselves because we're trying to get rid of the loneliness. This ain't, this ain't about trying to get, listen, you, dating you is not an excuse to get rid of loneliness. Dating you is the opportunity for you to get to know you. See, when you take somebody out on a date, you have some objectives in mind. The objective in mind, number one, is to really get to know this person. That's supposed to be an objective, get to know this person. I sit down, I'm talking to this person, I'm having fun with this person. I'm hearing their conversation because when you're dating the individual and you're taking them out to dinner, their conversation is going to tell you everything about them. They're going to tell you if it's going to be your night tonight. Their conversation with you is going to tell you if you want to pursue anything past this night. Their conversation with you tells you if you want to be involved with this individual. It's you sitting down and having conversation. So you have to learn how to date. So here you are, you're talking to the individual. See, I remember the first date that I had with my wife. See, I, I Reverend was, was, was not really in a position to really be dating anybody at that moment. And, and so what Reverend did was Reverend made sure that he ain't going nowhere was going to get him in trouble. You understand? See, see, when you're sitting down and getting to know you, when you're sitting down dating you, then you start to understand what who you are. You you understand who you are. You understand that uh, given that opportunity, say it's sanctified and that with fire, I'm gonna hit some. I'm, I'm just being realistic. You got to be realistic with yourself. And some of you are not realistic with yourself. If I put myself in this uncompromising situation, Rev gonna do uncompromising things. So 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 our first date with my wife was down at Long Beach at the beach. You understand? During the daytime, we walked down there. Biko Rev, no, he ain't been doing nothing. Now I ain't been touching nothing. I ain't gonna, hey, too many people out here. You understand? We walking on the beach hand in hand. We getting to know each other and talking to each other and having fun. You understand? And that, and that, that we was down there for a few hours, and then she had to depart, and Rev had to depart because feelings started to come up that shouldn't have been there. So Rev had to quiet them down. Okay, we got to go. I'm gonna do something. I ain't got no business. We got to go. And, and so she she go her way. I go my way. We have a date again and a date again. We got boundaries around us. We got a couple of kids down here with us. We 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 downtown. We down there having Starbucks. Starbucks used to be the dating place for us at one point. We got boundaries around us. And guess what we're doing? Now we're still getting to know each other, still having fun, still talking to each other, even though I'd already asked her to marry me. I still gotta get to know her. And so we're talking and we're having fun with each other. And then the graduation, now we the first real, real date we had, we had it at El Torito's. So here we are. Now, Reverend got a little bit more confidence. I got a little bit more swag. I'm not going to drop the ball. I'm not going to mess up. You understand? I'm not going to drop the ball. I'm not going to mess up. So here I am. I got this thing together a little bit now. And so as I, as I started to get things together more and more, I could increase a little bit more. I could increase a little bit more. But watch this now. It would have never happened if I didn't sit down and start dating me. I used to date me every Friday. If I didn't date me on a Friday, I dated me every Saturday. I made it a point to date me. It was always a table for one. And I got myself dressed and I took me out to dinner. And it was me giving me the opportunity to get to know me all over again and understand who God has made me to be. You have to understand this, that you got to learn who God has made you to be. You got to learn what God has called you to do. You got to learn what God has created you to do. You have to learn this. And the way you learn this is by sitting down having table for one, and not only that, but discussing things with God. When you have the table for one, you're rediscovering who you are. You're getting past the hurt and the pain. You're getting past the loneliness. You're getting past the frustration. You're getting past all of this because here you are. Here you are. I'm learning me all over again. There's boundaries now that you're putting around yourself that you won't dare cross because you know who you are at this moment. You got to learn to date you. You have to learn to have a table for one and be confident with the table for one. If you are not confident with the table for one, you will send out mental emails, spiritual emails. You will send out mental and spiritual text messages. And the mental and spiritual text messages will always be the G-Rock and the She-Rock. Here they go. And the first person that responds to your mental and spiritual emails and spiritual text messages. And some of you spent send out, you send out spiritual video messages to people. You're sending them out. And next thing you know, somebody answers. And who answers is not what you're looking for. 
What do you mean, Pastor? It's not what I'm looking for. Because what you sent out got answered by the devil. He's going to answer any one of them that you send out. So you're sending them and sending them and sending them and sending them. And the devil is answering every one of them. And so you get caught up and you get connected to somebody or something that you really don't want to be a part of. And it's because you didn't sit down and have a table for one. This is an opportunity for you to get to know you all over again. This is an opportunity for you to get to know who God is to you. Singleness is not loneliness, but singleness is a gift from God. For those of you who are married today in a relationship and, and you still feel lonely, have you ever stopped to think that taking you out would be a good thing? That taking you out to dinner would be a good thing? Taking you out to the spa would be a good thing? Have you ever stopped to think taking you to the nail shop would be a good thing? You take yourself to the hair salon, but, but taking you out, getting dressed today, I'm going out, just spending time with yourself. It's important to spend time with you because you, 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 you rediscover who you are, but not only that, you learn to detox. There are times in the house where my wife leaves out of the room and she goes downstairs and she got the remote in her hand, so I already know she don't want to be bothered, let her be there. And sometimes I'm in the bedroom and we could be apart from each other in the house, four or five hours in the house, never see each other, never talk to each other for four to five hours. And the reason being is because she need her space I need my space. It's me getting to know me all over again. It's her getting to relax and get to know herself all over again and to get rid of some things and to enjoy life the way she wants to enjoy. There's nothing wrong with that. And there are many people today who are watching me. You have never spent any time with you. You've never taken you to the concert. You, 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 you've never taken you out to dinner. You've never taken you to the movies. You, you've never done these things for you. You've never done this. And because you haven't done this for you, you have never understood who you are. You've never rediscovered who you are. You're in a season now where you have to go ahead on and rediscover yourself. See, having a man in your life won't complete you. But having the man in your life will always complete you. I'm talking to somebody today. Having a man in your life will not complete you, but having the man in your life will always complete you because a man comes with flaws. He comes with mishaps and mistakes. He comes with messing up. He has issues and problems. And the older we get, the more baggage and the more drama we have, the more set in our ways that we are. You understand? You know, I, I, I'm not one of them guys that, that's got to be all over the place you understand? I'm cool. The quarantine didn't do nothing for me. When the presidents and all these people start coming out, telling me they want people to be quarantined, that didn't phase me at all. I was always quarantined anyway. I wasn't going nowhere, no way. So it didn't phase me, didn't bother me. I could care less about that. I didn't lose my mind. I wasn't going crazy over this. None of that stuff phased me, period. Because guess what? Reverend was at home all the time. Reverend didn't have to go nowhere. Reverend didn't need to do nothing. Everything I needed was in the house. The first time I was going is out of the bedroom to the, to the backyard and sit out there and chill and kick back and do nothing. If I needed to go to the store, I was going to go there, get what I needed, and come right on back. So the quarantine did nothing for me. It didn't, it didn't phase me at all. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You understand? Uh, see, I don't want to go through the dating process no more. I'm, 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 I'm too old for the dating process at this moment. You understand? If, if, if I wasn't married or whatever, I don't want to go through no dating process. I'm too old for it at this moment. I don't want to get to know you all over again. I don't care. I don't, I don't care nothing about what happened to you when you was in the fifth grade. I don't, I don't care. I don't care nothing what happened. I don't care nothing about what neighborhood you grew up, what street you grew up. I'm too old. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. See, some of y'all laughing. Some of y'all probably laughing. Pastor, you don't care. Not at all. Don't want to go through the dating process all over again. Everybody got to put their best resume out front every day. I don't care. I don't care how many, how many nieces and nephews you got. I don't care nothing about your dog name spot that you had. I don't care. I'm just I'm too old for it. And so I'm at a different phase in my life. I'm just cool being me at this moment. And some of you ain't reached that point at this moment. <laughs> There's some older people out here who watching me. 
They can tell you they don't care either. They done got too old. They don't care. They don't care. It does not matter. It don't matter. They don't care. They don't care about the prom no more. They don't care about the graduations no more. They don't care about the class ring no more. They don't care about none of that stuff anymore. They done reached a point where they absolutely don't care. That's about it. I'm talking to somebody today. <laughs> you better hear me, see. When you get to a point where you're comfortable with you, you don't care anymore. You just don't care anymore. I'm cool. I can sit, I can lay in the bed in front of my wife. She ain't got to say nothing to me, and I ain't got to say nothing to her. You understand? We can be relaxing and chilling and do what we do. We can jump in the car and drive three hours, three and a half hours, four hours. She ain't got to say a word to me, and I ain't got to say one word to her. We rolling. You understand? We done reached a point in life where... It really don't matter anymore. I got what I want, she got what she want. Ain't neither one of us going nowhere. So let's just enjoy life. And that's about as far as we go with it. Some of y'all, you better learn to get to a certain point in your life where you just said there's a table for one. I'm enjoying myself. God came that I may have life and that I may have it more abundantly. I'm going to enjoy this life and I'm not going to lose my mind over this. <laughs> Let me get off this thing today. I may have been too real for some of y'all today. Some of y'all probably looking at me like, what? When you get older, there's older people on here. I promise you, if you hit them up, if you hit some of the people over here that are over, that are about 55 and up, they'll tell you they don't care. The majority of them won't tell you they do not care. They don't care. They don't care. That stuff doesn't matter to them anymore. They don't care. <laughs> Only the young people care. Oh my God! You had a dog named Spot. I had I had a cat named Spot too. Don't nobody care. We don't care. We just don't care. We just don't care. But we don't care. Let me get off this thing right now. <laughs> Cause I can see Miss Jennifer Smith. She probably tripping. <laughs> Let me get off this thing. See, to us enjoying life is waking up every morning and being able to get out of bed, and be able. Go to the grocery store, go shop, and do what we want to do, and come right on back. That that that's our thing of enjoying life. We don't need to go to nobody's baby shower. We don't need no wedding invitations. You understand? We we at a point we we just we just don't care. You understand? We just enjoying our life. We we at a place right now where this life may seem boring, but this is exciting to us. <laughs> Let me get off this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I just thank you for every person who's watching me today. I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless their lives tremendously, that you would add to their lives and upgrade their lives. For the people who are on here today who are married and lonely, I ask that you would fix their relationship. For the people, God, who are single in here, who are watching me today and who are lonely, I ask in Jesus' name that you would help them to rediscover themselves. But most of all, introduce them to you all over again, God, so that they may know that loneliness is not a curse, but loneliness is a gift from you. It's their opportunity to get to know you all over again. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for peace and prosperity, for health and wholeness and deliverance and comfort in my town, Itabina, Mississippi. I thank you, Lord, that you're moving swiftly, you're moving quickly, and you are taking the people's lives to another level in you, oh God. And Lord, and I thank you right now that you are stripping people of the things that would hold them back and hinder them from becoming what you have called them to be. And Lord, I thank you for it. Now, Father, we speak the blessing over the Delta as a whole. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we lift up the country beliefs. We pray for every Belizean citizen. We pray for your peace, your prosperity, your healing, your deliverance, your grace, and your mercy to be over the country now. God, I thank you that you're blessing the works of every Belizean citizen's hand now. God, I thank you that even as I'm praying now, you are opening new doors for them and you're pouring favor out on them like never before. And God, I give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. And I give you glory for it. Listen, let's get ready. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, let's get ready to receive off. <laughs> like I'm in church, bed, I'm off. <laughs> hey, let me give some shout outs to people this morning. Shout out to Miss Heaven who's on today. Shout out to Brother Thomas, who's rocking with us today. Miss Rose Marie is on today. Miss Cassandra James Moore is on today. Uh, my wife, I think, is probably on. I don't know. 
If she not, she'll come back on later or something. But shout out to you guys. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in today. I appreciate every one of you. Miss Shirley Powell, Miss um, I think I saw Miss Irene. I think I did. Miss C.P. Little is on today. Good to see you. Clint Powell is rocking with us today. Shout out to you. Yeah, yeah, I do see a picture of my wife, so she's on here today. She finally woke up. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Jackie Hankins this morning, who's rocking with us today. You know, she got more skills than Kellogg's got corn flakes. She be the bomb. So shout out to her. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, but listen, do me a favor. Make sure you get your seed in today. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. Don't let the devil stop you from giving. Don't let him rob you of your seed that you're sowing. But hey, Get your seed in, all right? Shout out to Miss Shannon Gooseby, all right? So go to our website, kingdomlifefavecenter.org. Click on the online giving button. Or what you can do, uh, I forgot to give somebody that day, so don't go anywhere. But what you can do also is you can give through the Cash App. The Cash App is uh, the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. Again, the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. Get your seed in the ground. Or if you want to sow directly to my wife, it's the dollar sign, Pastor Sophia Perryman. Get that seed in the ground today. I don't know if I saw Miss Tiffany Barnes on today. Um, but if I did, shout out to Miss Tiffany Barnes. You got most skills, and Kellogg's got cornflakes too. And uh, so you you the raisin brand of Kellogg's cornflakes. So shout out to you. <laughs> we appreciate you for being old this morning as well. Got to give somebody their day today. So today is Miss Bam's day. It's Miss Bam's day. My spiritual daughter Bam is her day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. It's her day today. Today also is Miss Shirley Powell's day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. So shout out to them. Show them some love and show them some appreciation today. Today is Miss Kelly Johnson's day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. It's her day today as well. So y'all show them some appreciation. Please do that for me. Hey, Miss Alicia Murray is on today too. So shout out to you. So thank y'all so much uh, for tuning in. Hey, shout out to uh, Minister Kim Simmons who's rocking with us today. When, when, when you hear me say G-Rock, that's a special thing between me and Minister Kim. She knows who G-Rock is. It's a name that we created for the guy who just don't do right, you understand, who takes everything away from a woman. And so I just created She-Rock on the spot, too. So She-Rock is the complete uh, same as G-Rock, all right? So shout out to you guys. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Ms. Mary Collins, good to see you. Well, do me a favor, get your seed in the ground. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground. Or you can give through the cash app. The cash app is the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. And for my wife, the dollar sign is uh, Pastor Sophia. So get your seed in the ground today. All right. Hey, I got to go, but I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so very much. Uh, and I'm ready to pray for you if you need me to. Um, the, the number for me to call me for me to pray for you, I'll be available at least 10 minutes. Uh, after this broadcast is over. And uh, so you can call me at 323-238-9915. Again, 323-238-9915. And uh, I'll be ready to pray for you. Uh, you just got to know that if, if if you're calling, that means somebody else is calling, so you can't take up all my time because I got to be able to pray for other people as well. All right? So show the people some love this morning, but call 323-238-9915. All right? If you get a voicemail, leave it. I'm going to call you right back. I promise you. I'm not going to let you go. Uh, without hearing from me and me praying for you, right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all again tomorrow. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Love y'all.